legend to legend. In 1941, at the age of 23, Ted Williams did something truly remarkable. He became the first player in 17 years to bat better than 400 for a season. That year ended at 406. In 1994, Tony Gwynn of the San Diego Padres came tantalizingly close. He was hitting 394 when the player strike ended the season. Recently, at the Ted Williams Museum in Hernando, Florida, Classic Sports had the very unique opportunity to listen to these two great hitters, Tony Gwynn and Ted Williams, talk about hitting. Your host is Bob Costas. Tony, there is no greater student of hitting in baseball today than you. You're legendary for having all of your at-bats cataloged on videotape. Go back and look at them when you're going to face uh, that pitcher again and all the hours in the batting cage under the stands in addition to the regular BP. I would imagine somewhere in your long study of hitting, you've gone over the theories of Ted Williams. Oh, no question. You know, just sitting here listening to him speak, you know, I... I all ears. I saw, you know, that's, I think in order for me to be successful, I've had to listen to people. I've had to take little bits and pieces of everybody that I know that's played the game. I've read books, I've looked at video, and somehow try to incorporate some of their theories into what I do. And Ted Williams' book was the first book that I ever read, The Science of Hitting. And mm -hmm. I really wasn't, early, in, early on, I wasn't really interested in the words. I was very interested in the little baseball picture, the little baseball box. I can still see it. On the, on the back of the magazine. And with Ted's balls, you know, he had that one little square on the, on the outer, outer part of the plate that he really didn't hit the ball that great with. But the rest of it, there was 300s everywhere. And as, as I started to play big league ball, I flipped that around. I turned it inside out. I was always strong on the ball in the outer third and kind of weak on the ball on the inner third. And so that's when I went back and got the science of hitting and started reading through on how to hit that ball inside. And, you know, this year I had my best year. I, had, I felt like I could control both sides of the plate. But it's, that's what hitting is all about. It's not about taking your own abilities. It's about listening to people who've been in that same situation before and had success. But everything we're talking about here, and you give him all the credit in the world, so do I, for wanting to better himself and going out and practice and everything else. But in the book I wrote, I did the same thing, but in the book I wrote, I closed it by saying, to be successful, as successful as your abilities are there, and you've got great ability, is how smart you are at the plate. Yeah. And it's from here up, 50% of it. So if you don't guess, you're not using the big, big factor. What about when you get to count three and nothing? He might not hit three and one, two and nothing. And, or a pitcher that when he throws it, he said, geez, I hope you can get that over you know <laughs> and and so right away you take a little more advantage now in order to pull you might have to get up in a plate dare him to try to get it by you dare him and okay and the best thing that ever happened to me was when a pitcher hit me on the fist inside i never felt bad about that i knew that if he hit me in the inside that i was waiting pretty good yeah second thing what does the pitcher think immediately? He says, ah, oh, you can pitch him inside. That's a way to pitch him. That's where baseball history's made from the middle in. <laughs> you know? And the pitchers That's are not the guy, the brightest guys in the field. So you got to take advantage right. of, of deliveries, patterns, and, and, of course, it all relates back to how well you see the ball against this guy. Mm -hmm. Some of the best pitchers I ever hit at, I could see them like gangbusters and they were the fastest pitchers I ever hit at but I could see them good and it's that herky-jerky little guy that you can't pick up and never does the same thing twice and uh, uh, has a little life on his ball those are always tough yeah. guys Ted when you went six for eight in that last doubleheader last day in 1941 to get to 406 I know you were happy to hit 400 but did you not want the season to end because it was a dream year and you wanted to stay in that groove in order to have that 400 a year, which is a wonderful year, uh, everything has to fall in place. You have to have, you know, you get, you get uh, cycles of good hitting, good pitching, you know. Everything has to fall in place. Good years, bad years, everything has to come in place. And, but a hitter like Tony has a much better chance of doing it, say, than, than the, a big swinger that misses a lot, uh, that kind of thing. But I'll tell you, I would bet right now Tony Gwynn's still a young fellow. Got a, a lot of career ahead of him. But when he is all through, he'll be guessing more than he ever did. In <laughs> and that's the reason I ask him that question. Yeah. You know, Ted, you told a great story in the Ken Burns baseball 
uh, documentary of your last at bat and you had hit some balls that might have gone out on another day. The air was heavy that damp day at, at Fenway Park, your last game. Quite a touching sight, everyone standing at Fenway Park as Ted Williams takes a pitch outside from Jack Fisher. Jack Fisher's on the mound for the Orioles, and he threw a fastball by you, he thought. Uh, he, he thought. thought. This gives the great insight into the mind of a hitter, and even, and you could say, the last ball you ever hit in the big league, guess you guessed pitch. on. Oh, you bet. He threw me, I had to count two and nothing. And he threw a fastball right there, and I don't know. You always know what you did. Was yeah. I underneath it, or, geez, was it a change-up, or... And I couldn't figure out, I just, I could not figure out in any way why I missed that ball. There I saw it, I swung what I thought was good and everything. And I was befuddled right there at home plate. But you know what, after I missed that pitch, I'm watching him. Give me the ball, right, give me the ball right away, you know. Give me another one, I'll throw this one by him too, see. <laughs> and I thought, well, he thinks he threw that ball by me. Yeah. Here he come again, and I hit it just a little bit better, and that was it. Yeah. But guess you got to guess but to get the most out of your abilities because if you don't, you're just throwing away all everything you know about a pitcher, everything you see of the score, everything you think of the win, uh, everything, everything. How do they pitch to me? And if you don't guess, well, you're, you're losing a little bit. And they remain standing here for the most part at Fenway Park as Williams hits probably for the last time in a Boston uniform in this ballpark. There's a drive to deep right center. This may be gone. Brad way back there watching. Hold on, Ted Williams. Well, if you had written it that way, nobody would believe it, so I even tried. And I'm going to predict right this show. Well, how many homers did you hit last year? I hit 12, which is a lot for me. All right. I'm going to predict you're going to start hitting more home runs. Well, I thank you very much. <laughs> I hope and so. Don't, I... And certainly don't change what oh, you're doing. I'm not. I'm not. But take more, more advantage of the count. Exactly. More advantage of the type pitcher you're hitting against. Crowd the plate once in a while because you know you can pull the ball better in. You can hit the ball hard when it's over the plate through the middle. Yeah. But it, if, the, if it's the ninth inning, two men out, and you're up there and you got the count two and nothing. You know? Mm -hmm. Say, well, I'm going to take Pickens on this pitch because I could get a double or even a home run. Now, right to that situation. Now, you were ahead two and oh in the count. You got a good pitch to hit. You fouled it off. But you, into yourself, you had, into your, I mean, you didn't give the outward appearance that you were upset that you missed How it. How would ball. you be thinking on that? I'm just, I, if I fouled it back, I know I missed it, but I'm not going to give the pitcher. But that's right. But she didn't say how you missed it. Okay. How did I miss it? Well, you were right on it. If you were underneath, were you early or late? No, okay, I got you. I mean, if you're underneath the pitch, what are you, generally early Completely. or late? If you're underneath the pitch? Well, see, that's different with me. I, I say late. For I me. say late, too. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> see, okay. I, I hit the ball the other way. I hit, the That's ball, all right. I hit the ball the other way a lot. I know you do. Now, you hit 394 last year. Your lifetime batting average is 333. You've won five batting titles. And when Ted Williams said, now, do you swing all the way through in this situation, or do you push at the ball? You had the look of a schoolboy oh, no hoping he would have the right answer, or the teacher would slap his hand with a ruler. No question. No question about it. You know, and it's funny because... You know, I, and lots of people look towards Ted Williams as their teacher, whether <clears throat> if they were fortunate enough to work under him or to do like I did, reading books and stuff. And, I mean, anybody else asks me that question, there's no doubt. I'd say, yeah, I tried to stay behind the ball and block the ball off, but with Ted sitting there, I had to think about it for a minute, and I, I was a bit nervous. But, uh, you know, I only wish that other hitters had the opportunity to sit down and talk to them about their own personal situations because... Uh, yeah, you can learn so much just from talking to people.